I say ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome. Why? You can correct me with Quran, you can correct me with Sunnah, and you can correct me with Ijma, and you can correct me with Aql. Why? Because people like us are what? Not ma'asum. We have sins. We, we have weaknesses. So in fact, I would encourage students to, to rectify me firstly in private. And if I do not change, then refute me in public. And if I do not change, then refute me in public. Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed someone around you who can rectify you. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed someone around you who can rectify you. Yes, so this is the case with every common Muslim and even the claimants are being Sufi guides today, especially in the UK. And then what concerns me even more is the fact that you have even given a fatwa permitting boxing or rather even saying that boxing is a form of jihad so that you can beat up a kafir who is hostile towards Islam. This is jihad. So if somebody was to choose boxing as a career, right, they are allowed to do so in justification of what someone like Khabib does. Going back onto the um, questions about gaming, Sheikh, um, and entertainment, uh, someone's asked, what about boxing or MMA? Uh, they have benefit, but you strike another person. So like watching MMA um, and watching boxing um, and actually uh, playing these sports. So there's two things to this. Firstly, uh, the uh, Habib, for instance, the MMA fighter, he beat up a kafir. I forget the name, McGregor. Now that man was a kafir, and he he was a kafir in the sense that he insulted Islam. So Habib is permitted to beat him up. This would count as jihad. Muhammad Ali beat up men who did not respect Islam. Muhammad Ali was permitted to beat those men up. In those cases, the fighters, what they do is counted as jihad and it is permitted. Now, if you are not good as Habib or Muhammad Ali and you do not fight for the prestige of Islam, uh, you do not fight for the prestige of uh, uh, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the fatwa would apply on you where if you have sponsors which are haram, the shorts that you wear, and striking the head and the face or taking a beating would not count as jihad and therefore it would be haram. So anyone doing MMA or anyone doing boxing, if you are doing this for the prestige of Islam, then enter the field and become like Habib and Muhammad Ali, then that would be permitted. And if you become like uh, Amir Khan or Usma, uh, Uzi, then you are not permitted to enter that field. MashaAllah, Sheikh. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting thoughts. My thoughts is that when you left UFC, I think the reason was maybe there's a doubt that UFC, there could be elements of haram in it. If it's harming the face or children following uh, the same footsteps or any other doubtful matters, I know there's a big discussions on that. I'm not giving a ruling. But was that your reason that maybe there's some doubts that are not pleasing to Allah and you want to do something Thank you. Else? Thank you very much. Okay. So were there any concerns about UFC being haram and is that why you left? <laughs> of course, but to smashing face people is not good things. 100%. How I can say this is halal, bro? This is, uh, this is not my decision to make something halal or haram. I'm just normal human being, you know. Sometimes smash people. <laughs> this is, 100% this is not good things, brother. I mean, subhanAllah, have we compromised our principles of Sharia so much that we cannot even define what jihad is? That we think that, you know, boxing and MMA and things like this are jihad? Subhanallah, brother, is this your knowledge of fiqh? What will become of the masses if you are promoting such things? Also of significance here is a quote from Islam Answers Atheism by Asra Rashid on page 332. He mentions here, striking on the face and head is explicitly forbidden 
with no exception to this in Islamic law. This is why sports in which people strike the head and face are also prohibited. And even on the battlefield in legitimate jihad, the believer must avoid the disfigurement of the face unless absolutely unavoidable. Now the point to note here is that striking the head is uh, explicitly forbidden, striking the face. However, the point he has mentioned about there being no exception in the Islamic law, this is incorrect. Mullah Ali Qari, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his Mirqat, Sharh al-Mishqat, mentions under the famous hadith, وَعَنْ جَابِرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْهُ قَالَ نَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَا عَنِ الدَّرْبِ فِي الْوَجْهِ Sayyidina Jabir رضي الله عنه narrates that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم forbade striking of the face. On this hadith sharif, Mullah Ali Qari comments, أَيْ فِي وَجْهِ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا الْكَافِرَ حَالَ الْقِتَالِ That it is impermissible to strike the face of anything. But the kafir who is being fought during a valid jihad, this is permissible. This is an exception to the rule. So this point also has to be noted.